Drive on the road. Driving through North West Texas back to Dallas. Coming back from Las Vegas. Um, hopefully I don't lose you. If the signal cuts out, just hang on for a sec. It'll usually come back in about a minute. I usually won't shut it down without saying goodbye. Unless it goes for a really long time, but it usually doesn't. So, uh, the topic for today is buying stuff you can't afford. Now, you guys tune into my channel because, well, a lot of you get to live vicariously through me as I squander my money onto luxury watches, pens, luggage, cars, travel, all kinds of fun stuff like that. And on one of the car forums I'm on, on a DeLorean car forum, of course I'm on a DeLorean car forum, I've owned almost 40 of these cars in the last almost 20 years. Um, and the thing about it is, uh, you guys see me with Rolexes and Rolls Royces and stuff. I don't buy stuff unless I can pay cash for it. That's my rule. If I can't buy it, I don't need it. Credit should be reserved for the things you really need. Buying your house, the car that you use to go to work, um, things like that. You know, maybe setting up your business, the business essentials, thing, you know, you don't want to abuse credit. Now there are countless people out there who give their opinions and financial uh, and credit building tips. Lots of people out there doing that. And it is important to build your credit, but you don't want to go into debt to build your credit. The whole point of credit is to um, prepare for the future. And you can't prepare for the future if you're using your credit to buy worthless shit you don't need. You know, when you first start your family, you got to buy a house, maybe go to Rooms to Go or somewhere and you get some furniture. And, um, you know, maybe you get yourself a sensible car. Maybe you start learning about tools recently since I've been buying the Icon series of tools, which is set to compare to the Snap-on tools. But the difference between Snap-on tools, Snap-on tools are sold on credit. They're very expensive. Their business model is that of a multi-level marketing system where they catch people that are just out of mechanic school, things like that, and they come rolling in in the truck and they convince you that in order to get a job, you're going to have to have this big elaborate tool set. You go buy a $10,000 box and $10,000 worth of tools, and you probably have student loans on top of that that you owe. <clears throat> and then um, next thing you know, you're in debt. You know, you're making 500000 a week, and then half your money's going to the tool man. Well, it's the same thing with buying other luxury items. So, <clears throat> a guy came onto the DeLorean forum saying, you know, hey, uh, I really want to buy a DeLorean. Is there anybody out there who loans money on these cars? Now, my advice to him is I said, listen, if you don't have the money to buy the car, you shouldn't be buying the car. Well, all these assholes started jumping all over me, telling me what a jerk I am, you know, telling me that uh, I'm an elitist and not everybody has money like you. You know, they were jumping all over my case. Even the moderator on the forum was giving me a bunch of bunk. He didn't ask you for that kind of opinion. <laughs> if you can't afford to buy a luxury car, this, uh, Hold on. This green energy over here. You know, if they turned these fans off, it wouldn't be so goddamn windy out here. Green energy. Steal all my internet. This black spot here. Every time I start to talk, it fucking blips out, so I don't know what to do. So anyway... You know, my, my argument has always been, going back to what I was just saying, that
that if you can't afford to buy a luxury item and pay cash for it, you really got no business buying it. There's a lot of people out there that have all these different arguments of why uh, I'm wrong. They're like, oh, you need to build credit. You do need to build credit. But there's a lot of more important things that you need to be investing in other than stupid, dumb stuff like watches, clothes, shoes, you know. You guys see, you guys are watching me in my, you know, middle to late 40s as I've already spent 20 years building credit and wealth and assets. You know, I already own houses and property. I already own vehicles. I already have a successful business, right? I have money in the bank. I can walk into any store and buy what they got and pay cash for it without flinching. I'm not bragging. I'm trying to prove the point here that in order to get to that level where you can see a Rolls Royce on eBay, on eBay and click buy it now, and you don't have to worry about going to your credit union. You don't have to worry about borrowing money, right? If you want to get to that level, first you have to build wealth. You have to have assets. You have to have equity, right? Buy a house you can afford. One that's way less than the payments that you can afford. You know, people tend to buy things that are just at the edge of where, how much money they make. They're like, well, I make 4000 a month. I'm going to spend $3,990 a month, right? If you make 4000 a month, right, don't get a house that costs 2000 a month. Get a house that costs, you know, $700 a month mortgage. Live cheap. You got to sacrifice in those early 20s, right? You gotta, you gotta live cheap. The first house me and my ex-wife bought was a little bitty uh, 1,200 square foot model home, $62,000. Our monthly payment was 750 bucks. And you know what we did? We paid 1,500 bucks a month. We put du double principal, right? We did, we'd apply an extra like six, 700 bucks a month to principal. And we paid that place off in like five years. And then when we moved out, we bought a bigger place. We owned that property and rented it out and we were getting like 800 free bucks a month. 850 I think we were renting for. So we were making money and we had equity and we were building wealth. So just like um, only a few years ago, I purchased my building that we uh, do Bob's Prop Shop in. It's the, 5,000 square foot building. That's the one we did our TV show in, the one you see in my videos. And now that building has appreciated. It's worth about half a million dollars now. And I own it outright. My house back when I bought it 10 years ago uh, was a hundred thousand bucks. 10 years ago after the housing crash, well, you know, that was a pretty decent sum of money for a house in Dallas. But now, now that house is worth three, four hundred thousand dollars, and I own both of them. I also own my mom's house, which is a duplex. My mom lives on one side of the duplex, and then we rent out. So all the taxes and all the bills and everything is paid for by the tenants. So she lives there absolutely free, plus a little. You know. So. You know, I don't finance cars, right? I only buy a car like this truck. I, I bought this truck on Craigslist for $15,000. And when it needs something, like the transmission I just purchased for $4,000, you know, I do have credit cards, but revolving credit isn't the same thing as... Uh, you know, buying something on credit, financing a luxury car. You know, when when you need to go finance a, 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 a some piece of shit car, you know, a Nissan or something, so that you can go to work, that's different. We've all heard those commercials. Do you have two hundred dollars? Do you have a job? We can get you into a Nissan Altima. Do you have this piece of shit? So, <laughs> I always pick on the Nissan Altima. I hate that car. One of my, my buddy Jordan has a Nissan Altima. They're pretty nice cars for like a minute. 
after about two after two years they fall apart but that's what it is it's a cheap car you know back in 1998 when i was working for gateway computers i went down and got myself a new ford Taurus station wagon car wasn't but like fourteen thousand dollars in the first place it wasn't a lot of money and i think i paid 500 bucks a month for that thing for a long time and then after that I went and financed myself a Dodge Magnum station wagon. It was $32,000. That was the most expensive thing I'd ever bought other than my house. And, you know, I paid whatever, 500 bucks a month for that thing for years, for like five years, until I paid it off. Buying a new car is a pretty stupid thing. I gotta be honest. And I, I, try, to, I try to tell people these kind of, these things, I mean, but if you don't have any money, you don't have any money. I mean, you gotta have something to drive, something to get around on. But you are way better paying 2,500 bucks or 5,000 bucks cash for a used car and then you own it than going and buying a new $20,000 car that you're gonna end up paying double for that's gonna depreciate down to nothing. Because at least if you buy a $2,000 car and drive it around for a while, it's still really only worth 2,000 bucks like that cop car that I bought, right? That thing was 1,500 bucks. And I gotta be honest, if that was the only car I owned, it'd be fine. That car runs perfectly fine. It's got air conditioning, everything works on it. Pay 1,500 for the car. I could easily drive that to work. And I'd own it, it's done. So I try to give these advice to people. So this guy was on the DeLorean forum asking people, hey, you know, what's the best place that loans money for 40 year old classic cars, you know. And I said, hey, listen, if you afford to pay cash for the car, you really shouldn't be buying it. And all these people jumped all over me for being, you know, a jerk. And I said, look, man, I'm the kind of guy, ah, I get the sun off my. I'm the guy that will tell you that you get a booger. I'm the guy that will tell you that your fly is undone. In my opinion, that's a good friend. A good friend will tell you when you're making a mistake. A good friend is somebody who's not gonna just tell you what you wanna hear, pat you on the back and patronize you. A good friend will give you their life advice when you ask for it. Because it's not like I just volunteered this information. He asked, opinion. And I said, okay, now look, here's the other way to look at it. If you wanna know who gives these loans, first of all, nobody loans money on 40 year old cars, okay? You're gonna to have to go to like a credit union and you're gonna to have to have a secured loan, a collateral loan, where you may have to use the equity of your house or some other valuable. You're gonna to have to have money to put with it. They're probably not gonna loan you the whole thing unless you have impeccable credit. And whereas you might be able to get a loan through PayPal or Discover Card or Chase, you know, or a credit card, People who sell these cars don't accept those payments. So that's not gonna work either. It's kind of difficult to get a large sum of cash, partially because they don't like to loan big sums of cash because they don't want to inadvertently, you know, be funding illegal activities, gambling, drugs, money laundering, all of these different kinds of things. So, you know, it's not super easy to just get a bunch of money that has no equity attached to it. No collateral, rather. You know, when you go through a place that totes the note and finances a car, well, they're using the car itself uh, as part of the valuable uh, collateral. But they could repossess the car from you, or the house, or the building tools, the snap-on guy will come and take your tools away from you. You understand? I'm get this sun off of me. The sun is right behind me on my face. So, I'm just trying to share a little of this advice. People ask me that, they go, how, do, how did I get where I am? Listen, I am not like But compared to somebody that doesn't make a lot of money, 
They look at me and they think I'm doing pretty badass. I, I kind of am. Fuck. <laughs> I was trying to throw that bomb on it. bounced all over the place. I hate these assholes that they pass you and then they go slow in front of you. This guy just had to pass me. Gets in front of me and he's pokey dokey and along. Get the fuck out of here. Where was all that hauling ass a minute ago? Now you're in front of me. Right in front of me. Oh, I hate driving around people. <laughs> anyway. So, I don't know. What do you think? You think I'm right? You think I'm wrong? You know, there's people out there that feel that it's an elitist attitude because basically they're saying, hey, who are you to say what somebody deserves? You know, that's how I feel about it. I'm like, look, if you can't afford to buy it, you don't deserve to have it. You don't get your pudding if you don't eat your meat. You! Yes, you! Stand still, laddie! You know what I'm saying? So back when I bought my first Rolex watch, it meant a lot to me because I paid $3,800 for it, and that was a princely sum of money for me at the time. To spend almost $4,000 on a watch. I still have that watch to this day, and it is more than doubled in value. Now the good news is that I did say to the guy, the good news is DeLoreans are appreciating in value. But that's not going to do you any good if, unless you're planning to sell it. Now, if your plan is you found a great deal on a DeLorean, you can't afford to buy it, your plan is to buy it cheap, flip it for a profit, well, then that's smart. But you're just trying to buy some luxury piece of shit car. The DeLorean is a piece of shit. It's a terrible car. It's not practical. It's not something you're going to be driving back and forth to work. It's not going to help you in any way. Get yourself a Ford Taurus. Right? Something useful. An F-150 truck. That's what you need. Nobody needs a DeLorean. A DeLorean is what you buy after you have everything else. And you're so bored that you really want to torture yourself with some sort of piece of shit car that you're going to work on every single time you go out and touch it. It's just like a boat, it's just like an RV, it's like an airplane. People who own airplanes generally regret it, for the most part. This is a bumpy fucking road. I feel like I'm driving on the moon. So anyway, um, that's just how I feel about things. So unless, unless your goal is to buy this luxury item for the purpose of flipping it for business purposes, to make money, it's a bad idea. Like if you're using a credit card to buy shoes, if you're going into Versace and buying a, you know, $6,000 purse on credit that you're gonna have to pay off for the next year or two, you are a dummy. And there's a big difference between a charge card and credit card. I have an American Express Platinum card. That is a no-limit card. You know, that card is made so that I don't have to walk around with a bunch of money. So if I want to buy something, I can literally walk into Tesla and buy a Tesla with this thing. Okay. They... My cards are metal. Chase Sapphire, I got a Discover, I got, a, I got all metal cards. Why? Because I got badass credit. But here's the deal though you got to pay those off every month. Right? You can't just let them build up. You got to pay them off. That American Express, Express card, every month, you got to pay it off. It might have 
30 or 60 days, I forget what it is, but you can't let it, it's not a credit card. It's a, I'll pay you back next month card. Because I don't have all the cash on me right this second card. You know, I, w I went into the Rolex store and bought a Rolex with it. I bought a Rolls Royce with it at an auction. That white Rolls Royce, I used that to pay for it. That's what it's for. And so I have the kind of credit where um, I can pretty much get, I can buy whatever I need to buy and they'll give me the money for it. Now, when I just bought this house in Vegas, the house was uh, $700,000. And they loaned me 600,000 of it for the house. Now, the house is not a luxury item. The house is gonna be where I live and it's gonna be the location of my business. So the plan is, uh, you know, I'm using the equity of my other two properties. I'm going to sell my Dallas house and my Dallas commercial property. And together, those should bring about 800000 or more. Which means I could pay off the house in Vegas and still have 200000 left over. And that doesn't even include my mom's duplex when I decide to sell that. And that doesn't include money I have in the bank. And that doesn't include revolving credit. And it also doesn't include other assets I have like Rolex watches or cars, things like that. So all together, that's over a million dollars worth of stuff. So that's why they had no problem giving me 600,000 because they know not only am I good for the money, but they have the ability to collect it if they need it. Not only from taking back the house that I just bought, because I had to put $126,000 down to get in. I, I had the hundred thousand dollars out of the seven hundred that I owed. And there was twenty six thousand dollars worth of closing cost, taxes, fees. You know, the the loan guy gets paid, the real estate dude gets paid, the title company gets paid, the taxes and insurance has to be prepaid, uh, escrow, earnest money, all that stuff. Right, and then after you move in, you know, you got repairs to make. You got redecorating, carpet paint. I've spent an additional probably twenty, thirty thousand dollars in that shit. Not to mention the fact that I drive back and forth to Vegas and Dallas every other week, and that cost me like over a thousand bucks worth of gas. So just moving there and everything, I'm gonna have fifty grand in that. So how much do I really have in the house? I'm gonna have, you know, seven hundred fifty thousand dollars into the house. Fifty of that that's not even part of the house but it will appreciate. Vegas properties are going up, 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 up like crazy. The market's on fire. That house will be worth a million bucks in no time. So, it was a good investment. But sometimes you're gonna, you know, like I'm about to drop another video of a watch that I just bought. It wasn't that expensive. But, um, you know, I probably bought about ten thousand dollars worth of watches in the last uh, month or so, but all of these watches are accruing in value. But besides the point is I can afford them. I can. It's not a big deal. It's not going to make or break me to buy these watches. And I know that I can sell them for at least what I paid for them, if not more. I don't buy watches that depreciate. There are certain brands, even though they're popular brands that depreciate. With a Rolex, you just can't go wrong on a Rolex unless you're buying the watch super hyper inflated. You know, like when I bought that Daytona for 18, I paid 4,000 over the sticker for it. But the dude I sold it to paid me 20 for it. But then he, then, then now it's worth like 30 grand. I just saw a platinum Daytona Platinum root beer, it was 110 grand. Fuck. Wow. Just like when people pay over sticker for a new Corvette. Stupid, man. The car has a $69,000 price tag. People are paying $80,000 to get one. And the next year it's going to be worth 
60 grand, whatever. You're gonna lose 20 grand in a year. For what? It's like my Rolls Royce, right? It's, it's a perfect example. The car is 15 years old, right? It's a 2006. The car was four, five hundred thousand dollars when it was new. I bought it for 60 grand. I, pay, I, I paid 58,000 for it. Now, granted, this was a salvage recovery car. I got it super cheap. I put a little bit of money into it, but I could already sell that car for like probably 75,000 bucks, 80,000, which is still a lot of money. It's not like a new Rolls Royce, but gosh darn, that's still a lot of bread. But you know, I point this out to people all the time. People get all excited about the car and they go, look, it's a beautiful car. It's a wonderful car. But you are surrounded by $60,000 vehicles everywhere you turn. You can't hardly buy a pickup truck worth of shit for less than 60 grand now. I mean, a new Dodge Dually is $85,000. A new Cadillac Escalade is over $100,000. Matter of fact, they're going to come out with a new 2022 um, excursion. It's going to probably be of 80 grand. The new uh, electric Hummers, 100 grand, right? So when you see a new Mercedes, a really high-end BMW, I mean, I'm not even talking about like McLarens and shit like that. I'm just talking about cars that you see every single day that are driving around you. 60,000 bucks for a car is not crazy money anymore. These SUVs, trucks, luxury vehicles, you know, Goddamn Tesla. I went and looked at a Tesla and to get the performance, all wheel drive, long range, it was like $140,000. Get out of town! You're not going to get too far out of town with that goddamn car. It only goes 300 miles. So, anyway, I've talked about this in my other videos about living rich through depreciation. My tour bus, 30 years old. You know, at $75,000, it was 10% of its original value. All right, so here's the key. Where, where do you get the money to buy this stuff for cash? I talked, I touched on this yesterday in my other video, which I deleted. So for those of you who sometimes you catch my live videos, I've had a lot of people comment that they're angry that they get, they, they see that I posted a new, or that I had a new video then they go to watch it and it's been private or it's been deleted. If you want to see my live videos, you must be a subscriber and you must have notifications on. Otherwise, if you miss my live video, tough shit. You gotta tune in when I do it. Now, let's just say that you're a young person. Maybe you're not that young. Maybe you're starting over. Maybe you have flushed your entire life down the toilet like Marty McFly Sr. in the alternative future. I gotta slow down a little bit. We've hit a 65 mile an hour zone. Um, driving back from Vegas to Dallas. I'm a few hours away from home. I'll be there soon. Um, so I talked about this yesterday. All right, let's assume that you haven't already ruined your life with student debt, felonies, kids out of wedlock, child support, all that other shit. Let's just say you're a young person and you basically have no direction in life. You have no skills. You are a complete loser. Here's your way out. Try to avoid vocational schools and student debt. You will never pay that shit off. You don't need to go to school. You don't need an education. Education is for punks. <laughs> I know you're gonna go, what? Listen to my hero, Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs. All you need is to get up and go to work. That's it. Now, you gotta pick the right job. You gotta not be lazy. You can be an apprentice and make 15 bucks an hour as an electrician, as a plumber, as an HVAC tech, doing construction, you know, learning to drive a forklift, 
Stuff like that. Like, you want to have a job for life? Learn to work on diesels. Best way to do that is the military. You go into the military, you learn to work on diesels, you come out of there, you work on buses, airplanes, shit, you'll never be out of a job. You know how hard it is to get your diesel truck worked on? Those guys charge a fortune. The diesel trucks are not going away anytime soon. Trust me. I don't give a fuck what Biden says or anybody else. This whole planet runs on diesels. Diesel trains, diesel trucks, diesel generators. Right? HVAC. Heating, ventilation, air conditioning. When it's hot outside and your air conditioner stops working, you will pay whatever you got to pay to get it back on. Right? Every time they build a new building, they got to have HVAC. And they got to have an electrician come in and work with that guy to power it. These jobs will never go away. They're never going to reinvent electricity. They're not going to start using Tesla coils to, to beam it to the shit, right? You become an electrician, you will have a job for life. Those guys typically make 30 to 60 bucks an hour. And once you become a journeyman electrician and have the ability to pull permits, you'll be the fat dude with the white hat telling all the other guys what to do. And you will gladly make $150,000 a year and live a pretty good life. Forget being a doctor and a lawyer and all that shit. If you don't have rich parents that are going to send you to school on a scholarship or something like that for that kind of work, you are going to have to work for a living. The trick is to become a upper level of that trade, a journeyman, right? Of a of the plumbing trade, um, electrical, HVAC. You run your own small business. You have guys working for you. You have several trucks. You have contractors. And you will make a great, great living. I assure you. Because look at what I do. I work on cars. I'm basically a mechanic. Or you could say I'm a fabricator. I work with metal. So I could, I'm the equivalent of somebody who works in a machine shop or in a plastics place, maybe that works on boats or RVs, uh, or a mechanic that works on cars. I, you know, I'm a ninth grade dropout. I have no degrees. I don't even have a high school diploma. You don't need formal education unless you're going to be a doctor lawyer or an engineer and if that's what you want to do that's great but you better make sure you got a backup plan and you got to make sure you have a support system if you don't have rich parents or a grant that's going to pay for it you'll be paying for those fucking student loans as long as you live my wife has multiple degrees she has like three bachelor's degrees and a master's degree and she will never pay off those student loans until she's dead and look at her, she became a personal trainer. And really none of those degrees help her as a personal trainer. And actually she's more than a personal trainer. She's the branch manager for two YMCAs, right? She's doing very well for herself. Now she'll sit back and tell you that her, you know, uh, psychology degree and all those other things help her. And I'm sure it does. But in the end, she'd still be, I think she'd still be where she's at today without those things. So, what do you do? You're a young person, you're in, on, you know, you're a teenager, or you're just 20 or whatever. If you have to go work a minimum wage job just to get started, live with your parents or get a roommate, get four roommates. And all four of you numbskulls live cheap for a couple of years in an apartment. Sleep on a cheap bed, watch a cheap TV, don't buy any expensive shit. Don't buy, don't buy fashion shoes, two hundred dollar jeans, nice cars. Bank money, bank money. Put money in your pocket. Put it in a jar, right? If you want to buy any kind of fuck Bitcoin and all that stuff, if you want to buy something to invest in. Buy gold and silver. And put it somewhere where nobody will find it. That shit goes up in value. Or just put your money in the bank. Everybody wants to tell you about all these different investment opportunities. People lose their money on these investments all the time. And they can be very time consuming. There's nothing better in the world than just having your money. Money. 
tonight. And save yourself up enough cash to get some of the basics that you're going to need. You know, like I said, if you're going to be an electrician, you're going to need a pickup truck or a van. Same thing. I highly recommend buying a van as your first, second, or whatever vehicle. If you have the opportunity to buy like a Sprinter van or an Express van, a Ford or Chevy van, a van is one of the greatest things you can have if you're going to work for a living. Trust me on this. A white van. Just get a plain white van with no windows, a free candy van. I've always had a white van. Ford Econoline. Now I got a Sprinter, that 3500 Sprinter you see me. Because as long as you've got a van or pickup truck, you can make money. You can make a living. Especially if it's in good shape, if it's a diesel, you know. And worst case scenario, hey. You can live in the sun, bitch. Just telling you, no better thing than to have a van. Not the best gas mileage, though. If you want good gas mileage, you know, get a used Prius or something. Just depends on what you're doing. I'm just saying, if you're going to be working for yourself, because listen, with a few basic tools, right? A couple of decent pairs of pliers, a couple of decent screwdrivers, a handsaw a fucking drill, you can be an electrician. You can put an ad out on Craigslist and on Marketplace and people will pay you to come over and install a ceiling fan or a light switch or whatever. I've already spent probably 5,000 bucks with the electrician that's doing stuff at my house, right? You learn your basic electrician stuff. Now the thing is, is you won't be able to pull a permit. You start working with somebody who's a journeyman who can pull permits and you work for him and what he'll start doing is subbing out jobs, right? So what he'll do, and you want to learn how to be this guy, right? He'll, he'll show up and he'll pull the permit for the gig. Then he'll send all his lackeys, you, to go do all the work. And then he just comes by and signs off on it. And then he doesn't do any work. He doesn't do shit. And if he wants to do the work, he can do good work and get paid as well. But that's what these journeymans do, man. And you get hooked up with one of those guys. That's really the trick. All right, the sun has uh, gone down now. Finally. I'm sorry that I can't read your comments. Uh, I can't see your comments, so I'm sorry if I'm not responding. But I can't read and drive. I mean, I can look in the partial direction of the camera, but I can't really do that and drive at the same time. So I'm sorry about that. And there seems to be a lot of traffic out today. I'm on 287 South. Headed for, I think, Wichita Falls is coming up. So I'm almost home. There we go. Um, I hope some of this stuff's making sense. Now listen, I mean, the way I've done it is not for everybody. There's people out there that are going to make excuses, either their physical abilities or disabilities. Uh, some of that is valid. If you are someone with a disability, learn to type. <laughs> learn to work online. But other than that, I really don't want to hear any bullshit about I'm a boy, I'm a girl, uh, I'm trans, I'm gay, I'm black, I'm Latino. Nobody gives a fuck. RuPaul himself can come over and hang a ceiling fan at my house. I don't care what your orientation is, what color you are. I've seen some chicks that were roofers and construction workers work their ass off just as much as the guys right I had a chick working at my shop on my TV show Aubrey and Aubrey got in there and she did fiberglass just like all the dudes I treated her the same as everybody else although I admit I used to stare at her ass a lot 
<laughs> she knows. She'd come in there wearing short shorts on purpose, just to mess with us. Anyway. But, you know, I, I never expected any more or less out of her because she was a chick doing guy stuff. Now, this is a controversial thing, but for certain manual labor things, men are just going to be physically more able than chicks to do certain things. But girls have a great place in uh, a lot of different industries because of their smaller size. Because some girls have small hands and they're shorter, they can get into places and do things that a guy can't. And that's a great advantage that they can use. So when people want to point out the differences between men and women, I like to think about the things that a woman can do, not the things that she can't. Going back to the DeLorean car for a minute, the DeLorean car was manufactured in Belfast, Northern Ireland. A lot of women worked on the cars, and their little tiny little Irish hands could get into places where my big chubby Scottish fingers can't fit. Because when we're trying to work under the dash of this son bitch, we're like, what little fucking leprechaun put this together? <laughs> it's impossible. You little person with your little bony fingers. How did you do that? I'm talking about like a size six millimeter nut in a hole. Give me a break. <laughs> so let those things work for your advantage. Um. But, uh, you know, I gave this example yesterday. You know, you could take four people making minimum wage sharing a... If you had two couples, right? And it doesn't have to be two couples, but, you know, you get a two-bedroom apartment or small house, and the four of you share it, each in a bedroom. So if you're couples, you're sleeping in the same bed. Or if you're not couples, you can sleep in twin beds, you know. Uh doesn't matter if you're gay or straight or whatever. Just the whole point is, you know, two straight dudes don't want to sleep together, so you're going to have two bunk beds. Not the most ideal situation. But if you all have the same goal, and that goal is to bank money, if you do the math, pull out your calculator and punch in, you know, eight bucks an hour times 40 times four, and then times four again, and then you think about the fact that you could get a two-bedroom apartment, let's say a thousand bucks a month, you split that four ways and you're each paying, let's say you're each paying 300 bucks a piece for an apartment plus utilities, you'll have tons of money left over <laughs> to, to pay for a car, insurance, food, right? So people go, you can't live on minimum wage. Well, not for yourself, asshole. You're not supposed to live on minimum wage. Minimum wage is made for children and retired people. That's what it's for. It's made for kids to make a sandwich, bag groceries, or a retired person to say hello to you at Walmart. That's what minimum wage is for. You're not supposed to live on it. If you're 30, 40 years old and you're single or you got a kid and you're trying to live on minimum wage, you have made some serious life mistakes and you are paying the price. There's people out there that like, I mean, I don't know, I'm sorry, but like, if you've gotten yourself into a pickle and you've got felonies or you had a kid or you're a sex offender or whatever the situation is, I mean, if you smoke cigarettes your whole life and then you got cancer, sorry, what do you want me to do about it? The only thing I can do is try to reach people that are young enough that they have a shot. Now let's say you've already ruined your life. 35 years old, you've already got a baby mama, or you're, you're a single mother, or, right? You got a felony conviction, nobody will give you a job, right? Well, you're basically gonna have to start over like you were 16 now and try to squeeze what little bit of life you can out of something and see if you can't work your way up to something. Don't smoke cigarettes, don't go out drinking, don't do drugs. 
I sit on top of a righteous high horse because I've never smoked a cigarette, I've never done drugs, and when I drink, I have like one cocktail, one social cocktail. That's it, maybe two tops. I do like one shot and a cranberry vodka. And then I have a Diet Coke, right? And I don't spend a lot of money at the bar. I live in Las Vegas. I have, I have been living in Las Vegas all this year and I haven't spent a penny gambling. Not a penny, not one dollar, not one spin red dime on any gambling. So when you see me do these videos about watches and this and that, most of the time they are recoupable assets. Like I'm about to do a video on a watch I haven't even seen the watch. It's waiting for me. It came in the mail. And I'm going to do a video of it as soon as I see it. And, uh, and I'll tell you what I paid for it when I do the video. And I could sell the watch for a small profit today. That's the only reason I bought it. So I'll get to enjoy it. I'll get to wear it. And it will appreciate in value. Because I've already bought it depreciated. Like it was a $5,000 watch I bought for three. It's brand new. And it's a very limited edition watch. It's a fashion watch. And fashion watches don't carry the kind of money that tool watches do. You know, Rolex is a tool watch. This is a, this is a, you know, they call it a sports watch or, a, you know, this is a sea dweller. This watch will always be worth what it's worth. You know, watches, Rolexes are like money. This might as well be money. That's what this is. This is money right here. Might as well, you put this in your wallet. Right? That is money. Is that right up? There we go. That's money. That's money right there. You're looking at money. That's what money looks like. Because I could sell this watch today for more than I paid for it. Or at least what I paid for it. You know, rich people hide their money in assets that aren't just cash. A billionaire doesn't have a, just a billion dollars, usually. He's got stuff that's worth money that either holds its value or goes up in value. I'm gonna tell you a story without mentioning any names. A friend of mine recently, he's going through a divorce. If he's watching right now, don't panic. I won't give any information so that no one would know who you are. But long story short, his, his old lady figured out that he was messing around. He comes back home and all his shit is gone. All his possessions have been removed out of the house and put into storage somewhere. And all of a sudden, his credit cards and joint bank account is cleaned out or turned off. So, biggest advice I always give anybody who's in a relationship of any kind is you, you, you should have, first of all, just don't get married. That's the first advice. Second of all, you need to have three bank accounts. You know, yours theirs and ours yours is your money and no one has access to it theirs is their money no one has access to it. ours is our money that requires both signatures to pull out any money and that's the account that you use to pay bills you both put money into that account okay so say you're splitting the bills you both put money into that account you should also invest into money that isn't money now you can just straight up bury cash in the woods the problem with paper money is that it's paper it gets wet it catches on fire it gets moldy you know it actually goes out of date. You know, like if you had a bunch of $100 bills from like the 80s and you went into the bank, they'd be like, 
wait a minute, what's, what's, this doesn't, you know, all of these bills are out of circulation. This is just, we need to call somebody, right? However, if you instead had a bunch of Rolexes, a bunch of silver bars, a bunch of gold coins, gold bullion, American Eagles, Krugerrands, you could take this Rolex, bury it in the sand for a hundred years. And it'd probably be fine when you dug it up, as long as the crown was screwed down. But if you put it in a coffee can, but if you buried cash, what would happen to it? It'd be moth-eaten, you know, turned to mush, right? So I tell fellas all the time, fellas, the chick that loves you today is gonna want your head on a stick one day going to want to take your shit. She's going to want to hurt you. And so you should and, and you know, you don't have to look at it as a backup plan like you're planning on leaving your, your, your partner. Just for any reason. You know, the economy changes. Maybe you get sued. You know, maybe there's an IRS problem you have or whatever it is, right? They can't take what they don't know exists and what doesn't exist. It does, you know, money that's in the bank has been accounted for. But let's say you go on eBay and you use your business account to buy gold coins, collectible coins. And then you tell your accountant, I bought business materials. What is this? Metals. Whatever. Oh, uh, it's business materials. Right? And then you take those coins and you put them somewhere. Not in your house. Not in your business. Not in your car. Not in a bank. Somewhere else. Where no one could possibly get to it. Don't you remember when... Uh, The end of Shawshank Redemption. Andy Dufresne buried this can of money under this tree. So, because it's always going to be there, you can always go to it and get it when you need money. Because here's the thing about a gold coin, guys. You can take a gold coin anywhere on the planet Earth and cash it in. You can take a couple of gold coins, put them in your pocket. You can be in London, England, walk up to any pawn shop and go, Oi, mate, give me 2,000 pounds for this Kruger round. Roy Toe, here's some money. I can take this Rolex. I'm going to London. I'm going to London in October. I could wear this watch. Let's say I was desperate for cash. I could walk into any jewelry, pawn shop, Rolex store in London and go, Oi, mate. Got a Rolex Sea Dweller, yeah? Give me 10,000 pounds. They wouldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't pull the fucking money out of their pocket fast enough. Hand it to me. And there'd be no record of it. You know, when you go through the airport and they go, do you have anything to declare? Money is money. They don't count this as money. Maybe you buy a $100,000 Platinum Rolex, new in the box, and you put it somewhere safe in a safe deposit box or something. That's a hundred grand that's going up in value that no one knows you got. I'm just saying. You understand what I'm saying? You know what I mean, Burn? And I'm not suggesting that you do anything illegal. I'm not suggesting that you dodge your taxes. I'm saying that when you own a property or home or cars, all of those things have to be taxed, titled, and they can all be seized and taken away from you. But no one can take away some gold coins. Where are they? I lost them in a boating accident. They don't have serial numbers on them.
Just saying. Well, it's getting awfully dark. The sun is down behind me. And uh, I'm getting pretty close to Dallas. But mostly it's getting too dark for, for the video. I just wanted to share some of my opinions on some things. You know, one of my worst traits that I'm trying to stop doing is one-upmanship and bragging. It's my worst personal trait, my worst personality trait. I brag about people I know, things I've done, places I've been, things I own. Uh, when someone tells me that they've done something or met somebody, I feel like I've got to top it. You know, and that's all, that all comes from a place of insecurity. And now that I've, I'm older and I've, I get more accomplished things, I don't do that as much. I'm aware of it and I'm trying not to do it. I feel though in this situation, this is a lesson. I'm, I am being the professor here and I'm giving you my life experience and advice And so, for instance, when I look back, going back 25 years or so, you know, I was working for this uh, television station, this TV network, and, uh, sorry, it's getting really dark here, guys. And uh, how I got into building the cars, I've told the story before, is I used to build mobile production video trucks and vans. I used to take a like an old van, like a, you know, Ford van, my favorite. And then I would turn it into like a mobile production video truck. And I had built the first one for me because I always wanted to have one. I always wanted to have a four camera field truck. And I wanted to rent it out. And I was renting it out for like 1500 bucks a day. It was a lot of money back then. But I only rented it out a couple of times. And a friend of mine said to me, you know, you could probably sell this truck for like 40 or 50 grand. And I thought about it and I'd never had that much money before. And I did. I sold the sold the van for forty thousand dollars back in uh, two thousand one. And I mean, I never had forty thousand dollars before. Holy shit! So you know what I did? I went down to the Harley store and bought a brand new Harley for cash. Still got. I still have that motorcycle. Nineteen thousand seven hundred dollars I paid for that Harley Davidson Electric Light Ultra Classic. Now, I didn't finance it. I paid cash for it. My rules, remember. But if I, you know, and I, and I took the other half of the money and I uh, another van. But if I was really smart, I would have just built two vans instead of one. Instead of buying a Harley, I should have built two vans and then four vans and then eight vans. But what I did was, every time I sold a van, I would buy a toy. So I built a van, sold it, bought a Harley. Built another van, sold it, bought the DeLorean, right? Built the van, sold it, did the Knight Rider car. And so I, I was, you know, buying toys and uh, I guess building wealth, but if I was really smart, if if 46 year old me could go back and talk to uh you know 23 year old me or whatever however old i was i'd say dude <laughs> don't buy any bullshit, right keep driving the ford tours and keep and then build an empire of these vans until you're fucking rich and then you can buy all the stuff you want so the problem is, is that all of us right now, we're all really worried about ourselves now and not worried about ourselves later. 23-year-old me didn't give a fuck about 46-year-old me. But see, now 46-year-old me is starting to worry about 55-year-old me. You get where I'm coming from? You know what I mean, Vern? So, 
you got to start thinking about the fact that you're going to live way longer than you probably think you will. <laughs> I wonder if I can do this. That's not so bad, I guess. Or actually, what? Uh, that's too much in the way. So, that's just kind of some of the lesson I'm trying to teach people. Don't go get yourself into debt. Don't go get credit cards. You know, let me rephrase that. It's important to have credit cards. Have lots of credit cards. But only use it to buy shit you can afford and that you need. Don't buy this malarkey about building credit by buying shoes you can't afford and pants you can't afford and, you know... Like, when I see, for instance, these uh, fucking uh, collectibles, you know, like people buying, uh, you know, some model of the Starship Enterprise or some shit on 12 easy payments of $99. I'm like, what is wrong with you? You're fucking financing Legos? Come on, man. Give me a break. People are financing stuff that I just, I'm like, what is wrong with you? You should not be financing this stuff. If you can't afford to buy a figurine, a limited edition, it's a signed and number limited edition. I must have it to put on my shelf. Fucking dweeb, what's wrong with you? That's why when I sell my cars and my props and people beg me for discounts, I said, no, you don't need a Nobody needs a proton pack, you dummy. It's a plastic backpack with lights in it. What the fuck are you going to do with it? If you can afford to dress up like a Ghostbuster when you're 40, well then yay. But if you need to finance it, you're an idiot. <laughs> Same thing with the DeLorean time machine. If you can't write me a check for that car, if you had to finance it, you are a dummy. You're a dummy. I'll tell I'll say it in your face. You know, don't finance a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or a McLaren. Now, there's a big difference between being able to afford to buy one of those cars and then using points manipulation to buy it. There's a big difference between that and someone who can't afford it buying it. But having to finance it. Because I know there's people are going to be out there that are going to go, well, no, wait a minute, there are great leasing programs or there's... There's, uh, you know, financing deals where you write off the interest and then you do this. That's a little different. Those are business strategies. You know, like people like uh, Rob Fre uh, Freddy, that he, he, has, he rents uh, luxury cars. That's a business. That's a different thing. I'm talking about somebody that's like, oh, well... I make 40000 a year, but I can't afford a Lamborghini Gallardo, so I'm going to finance it. No. That's dumb. So, you know, this guy that wanted to finance the DeLorean, trying to find a place to loan him the money, I'm like, that's going to be really difficult. It's going to be high interest. And I'm sorry if this sounds kind of big league and elitist, but if 40,000 bucks is kicking your ass, you're in, you're playing big boys game. Big boys. $40,000 is nothing. Nothing. I got rich friends that are like actual rich. $40,000 is, is nothing to these people. Nothing. I mean, I just bought a DeLorean the other day. It was, you know, it was a junker. Bought it for $22,000. And I didn't flinch. I wired him the money. I called him on the phone. Yeah, you got the car, okay, I'll take it. Yeah, let me wire you the money. Some 22 grand. 
when they delivered the car the other day. Right? No big deal. Just like this truck, right? I, I, I've said this uh, in, in the videos about the, uh, the, the tour bus. Uh, you know, do not get into the RV game unless you can, you have like 10,000 extra bucks to just wad up into a ball and throw out the window. If you want to get into the, the, the high-end RV game, like you're going to buy a $100,000 RV, if you need a transmission or you need a rear end or you need some work done or something, be prepared to drop like 10 grand. So just like uh, my buddy uh, Omar works for me, bought that Dodge, or it was a Ford Dually truck. And every time he has to do something small to it, it's expensive. You know, like he had to go buy new batteries because they take two batteries. So he went and bought two Odyssey batteries. They were 600 bucks. He was pissing and moaning over. And I was like, dude, that's what it is to own a Dually truck or a diesel truck, I should say. It's like this big excursion, right? $4,000 transmission. Didn't fucking flinch. Here's a card. I mean, yeah, it sucks. 4,000 bucks is a lot of money. But if you don't have that kind of money to, to just throw at the vehicle anytime it needs something, this ain't for you. And that's what I was trying to say to the guy with the DeLorean. You know, you get a DeLorean, you're gonna probably have to do a bunch of shit to it. And you can spend a couple thousand bucks on it really easily. And if you have to finance the car because you can't afford to buy it, then it's gonna really suck when you need to buy two or $3,000 worth of shit car you feel me so a lot of people they want they they see guys like me and they want to have the stuff I have and they're like well I can just barely do it I can just barely I can barely afford it you know like for instance let's, let's take the Rolls-Royce Phantom for, for an example now maybe you can afford to go buy the car for 75 grand. You can pull that off. Right? Are you prepared for the insurance you got to pay? Are you prepared to spend four or five grand on a set of tires? Are you prepared to spend four or five thousand bucks to send it in for maintenance? Right? If it, like, I'm having my injectors change, gee, that's going to cost a lot of money. What if you need a transmission or something? You're buying an old used car. 15 year old used luxury car. Everything for that car is expensive. Everything. So it's not just the thing you're buying. Uh, expensive stuff always has expensive extras. <laughs> That's just how it is, folks. So it's not that I'm trying to insult people or put them down. I'm not trying to say that I'm uh, better than anybody or that I'm so great. I'm just trying to make people aware of what they're getting themselves into. And if I could have given my young self advice, I would be a much, much richer man today. I'm only just now figuring stuff out in the last 10 years, quite frankly. And I've still got a lot to learn. Oh, shit, it's getting late. I can't wait to get home. Anyway. Thanks for hanging out with me on a Saturday. Maybe I'll do another show tomorrow at my desk. I don't know. We'll see. I just like doing these while I'm on the road. And maybe I'll leave this one up. Maybe I'll leave this video up and let people watch it. Because I think it's got some good, valuable information. I'm going to go back and posthumously read the uh, comments. Just a fair warning. But if uh, any trolls are in there saying a dumb shit will be banned and deleted. Just letting you know. So, that's just some life advice from me, Video Bob. I'm not rich at all, but I'm doing all right. And I'd like to see other people doing okay, too. And I, like I said, I wish I'd have had a, a guy like me to kind of tell me some of these things when I was younger. I'd be way further ahead. Well, it's getting pretty darn dark out here. So I'm going to let you guys go. Rock out to some music. And I'm almost home. 
So, uh, anyway, catch you on the flip side. Thanks for hanging out. Bye.